G'day guys, it's been a while. We've had some bloody horrible weather this, this winter, this galactic core season. We've only got maybe a month of it left and I'm really hoping that it comes to the party a bit better than what it has been. We're gonna talk about editing today. Now, there's different sorts of editing that we can talk about. One is like deep sky stuff, which we're not gonna do. We're not gonna do it on this channel. I'm talking about stuff like this photo here. And what we're going to do, I'm not gonna show you how I would edit it, I'm going to get a photo that I've already edited and then we're going to see what AI says we should do to make this photo better. Let's get into it. What we're using here is ChatGPT. I got this idea from Greg McMillan. He put a photo into this program, into this uh, ChatGPT, that he'd already edited and said, hey, what can I do to make this better? So I've done the same thing. This was a photo taken on a recent trip that I did up to Queensland and back down again. And I've said to ChatGPT, what could I do? What's the best way to edit this uh, photo to improve it? And it's given me, and I've already edited this photo. It's given me a heap of things here of what we can do. And we're gonna do it here and see if it's worthwhile. This is, this is the free version of it. To improve this photo of a night sky with camping setup in the Milky Way, consider these editing suggestions. Enhance the stars, boost the contrast to make the stars pop. We could also selectively brighten the stars or adjust their clarity to make them stand out more against the dark sky. It's also asking us to reduce noise. We know that noise on an iPhone Astro photo is reasonable, so we've got to look at doing that. Increase saturation and vibrance slightly. That word is key, slightly. Uh, next one, sharpen details. Applying sharpening specifically to the Milky Way will enhance its texture. Will it? We're going to try that too. Uh, foreground adjustment, brighten the foreground elements such as the camping equipment, makes sense. Uh, darken the sky, you can darken the sky further to emphasize the brightness of the stars. And does it tell you how to do that? A slight vignette around the corners. Hmm, let's try all this. So we're gonna open up, and it says down the bottom there, adjustments can be made in using software like Lightroom, uh, Photoshop or similar photo editing apps. So uh, the point of all this is that if you're not really comfortable with the way that you edit and you're looking for a way to get better at it try this we're going to do it and we're going to see the before and after and see if we think it's better or not let's enhance the stars and enhance the contrast because it said the stars lightroom we have the sky masking so we're going to try that we'll go add that select the sky it's going to go through select the sky we're going to add the contrast to the sky that's all we're going to do uh, light add more contrast did it do anything did a little bit, might add a bit more. That looks a bit better. And we'll hit the tick. Let's go up to the next bit there. Reduce noise. Long exposure night shots often come with noise. Applying noise reduction will smooth the sky and remove the grain, keep the stars crisp. We're gonna go into the same mask. That is um, the night mask. And reduce the noise. It affects, is it affects? No, it's detail and decrease the noise. How's that look? Sure. Okay. So far it's made a bit of adjustment to the sky. I'm, I'm not hating it. Let's keep going. What else we got? Uh, increase saturation and vibrance. Enhance the vibrance and saturation. Come out the, oh. We're still doing this just to the sky. It doesn't say just to the sky, but it does talk about there the Milky Way. So I'm gonna just go with the whole image. Go color. So this is something that I don't normally do. I'm gonna increase the saturation. Why not? I think that's that's enough. I don't yeah, maybe a little bit more. That's enough. I don't really don't really like too much color in these sorts of shots. Sharpen details, applying <coughs> Sharpening specifically to the Milky Way. Hmm. I don't know about this, but we're going to do it. We'll go back up to the, that same mask. And we're going to sharpen. I'm not confident that's going to do much. Hit the ticky on that again. What else we got now? Foreground adjustment. Brighten the foreground element, such as the camera. Yep, that's cool. We can do that. Same sort of thing. Go into that mask. Add another mask. Select subject, it'll go through, find that subject, which is the camper trailer. And what did it want me to do? Foreground adjustment. Brighten the foreground elements. Okay, I'm gonna brighten it up. Go to light. Um, you could be easily mistaken here and just going adjust the exposure. I don't think that's the right way to do this. Um, I'm just gonna bring that back 
to the center. You can double touch on those buttons and it'll bring it back to the center. I'm gonna increase the whites and the blacks. Just a little bit. That's probably too much. Yeah, that's, that's about the right amount. The difference in doing the exposure and, well, versus the white and the black is that you have control over each one of those. If you adjust the exposure overall, it just brightens everything. Whereas in this situation here, like you can see there that I wanted the blacks not to be as much as the whites. So this looks better for me. Uh, let's go back to the AI. Darken the sky. You can darken the sky further to emphasize the brightness and the contrast with the Milky Way, a slight vignette. All right. The way that I think we should do this is go back to that original mask of the sky and go to light and I'm going to decrease the blacks because it was talking about de darkening the sky. I'm going to decrease it a little bit. Can I add a vignette from here? I think I might be able to. No, I can't. So I'll hit the tick from there, go back into the effects. I'm pretty sure I can get a vignette here. I can. Other way, Shane. All right. I'm that's it. That's all the photo. Now it's going to hit that touch on it and the before and after actually. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I didn't expect that, that to work very well, but I do like that. It is one of the questions that I get asked quite a bit on different videos that I do. That is how to edit, what program I'm using to edit, and people asking for tips and tips and tips and tips to edit. But every photo is different. So I think using this has its benefits. It'll certainly get you started in the right way. I'd like to know what you guys think. Is the one that I edited first better than the one that ChatGPT says is better? Let me know. I'll also put them over there on Phone Photo School so you can download the originals, or the ones that I've edited, I should say, and see what you think up close and personal. That's it for today, guys. Catch you later.